Okay, if you guys have questions, just unmute yourself, okay? This isn't supposed to be like me just talking at everyone. I'd rather you guys like ask me questions as I go along um, if you have some. And this is gonna be really brief and then we're gonna do some questions and whatever, discuss your week a little bit and talk about you know, some of the great things that have happened and maybe some of the frustrating things and hopefully we can help each other. What I really wanna cover today are the two T's time and tracking two things that probably frustrate the hell out of everybody but they are super important so first off we're going to go to time i think one of the biggest misconceptions when someone starts as a coach is how much time this is going to take what happens is you see maybe me talking or maybe your upline talking and you see their success and we love sharing that with you, but you assume that it, you're going to get there right away too. You forget to think about all the work that it took us to get there. I've been doing this for three years. Every single day for three years, I've done the same behaviors and it's got me to this point. That doesn't mean I can stop now. If I stop now, everything is just going to kind of crumble. It's going to start one step by step by step. I'm not sure why we have no problem putting the time into building a house or building up a clientele as a hairdresser or building up your experience as a nurse. Heidi, you're in insurance, like building up your clientele. I don't know why we don't have any problem doing that. Yet when it comes to something like this, network marketing or doing things online, you think it's just going to be immediate. People are not, you know, if you started as a, let's take a, let's take a dental hygienist for example, or I, this is going to be easier for me, an apprentice, a hair, in a hair salon, I hire someone that's just out of school. Do you think anyone trusts her right away? Do you think anyone's calling her on the phone for a haircut? No, people are dying when they have to sit in her chair. They're nervous. You know, they're like, oh my God, what is she going to do to me? Does she know what she's doing? Is the owner here? Can I talk to the owner? Can I make sure this is going to be okay? You're nervous. That is the exact same thing people are thinking about you when you first start coaching, especially if you've had nothing to do with health and fitness. So it's going to take some time. The problem is people seem to set these goals and if they don't happen, they say, okay, well, I'll never be able to achieve that because it's just not happening. So I'm just going to downgrade my goals, you know? Okay. So yeah, I know I sh wanted success club 10, but clearly that's not going to happen. I'll just make my goal success club five. No, that's not what you need to do. You need to upgrade your goals. It, it takes work no matter what. It takes work to get to Success Club 5 or Success Club 10. Why wouldn't you make your goal pretty lofty and instead of downplaying and downgrading the work you're going to do, maybe put a little bit more work into it. The more people you talk to, the more connections you're going to make, the more posts you put on your page, the more Shakeology you drink, the more exercising you do, it's all going to multiply and people are going to see that you're really in this and they're going to trust you faster. So if you're letting fear stand in your way, you need to give yourself like you need to kind of talk to yourself and say, you know what, is this really for me? I got to get past the fear. I got to start posting more. I need to get inviting more. I need to get talking to more people. At the end of the day, if you are still in building mode, nobody on this team is off of building mode, myself included. We are all building. There's no expansion mode here yet. We're too young. So we're all building. Stop spending four hours on YouTube videos. Stop creating beautiful images. Stop making all this fancy stuff and just get in your messenger or get on the phone or get talking to people and sharing your journey. That's what you need to do. It is so simple. I made it very difficult for myself. I had no one to tell me this. So in the first year, I killed myself. And I mean spending hours. <laughs> I bet you for a year and a half, I slept four hours a night and that is it. 
hours because I was creating all this fancy stuff. I was blowing my brains out on YouTube, trying to figure out every single little thing that every other little coach was doing. And then at the end of the day, I started doing the thing that I hated most, talking to people. And the reason I hated it was because I didn't do it enough. So it scared me. All I really needed to do was take a couple hours a day and completely focus, completely focus on messaging people and posting on my wall. That's all I needed to think about. And that would have got me the same amount of success and a lot more fucking sleep. <laughs> I, we're trying to make this easier for you guys. And I know the reason why no one does the connecting is because it's scary. There might be a couple people on this team that truly, truly have the gift of inviting and really, really like it. And that's awesome. They're not good at something else. So don't worry about it. We all have our strengths. If it's not your strength, you need like anything else. I couldn't Today's a perfect example. I decided to go back to Shailene Extreme and do a cardio workout that I used to do like five, six years ago, long before coaching. I can remember the burpees in this section and she asked you to do 16. I couldn't even do six. I remember not like so clearly not being able to do six. And then it would get to this lunge portion and we do these like prisoner lunge things. And I remember standing and watching. I remember it clear as day. Today, I did that whole workout, no problem. It took me time to get to that point. It took me years of working out to get to that point. It's going to take you a long time to get this going. It's going to take a long time to be comfortable inviting, but it doesn't mean you don't do it. You're never going to get there if you don't start. So if it's fear that's standing in your way, or if you've got this preconceived notion that it's not going to take much time and it's not going to take much work, you're never going to be successful. It takes time and it takes that consistency of doing it day in and day out. One can't happen without the other. You can't just message and not post consistently on Facebook. You can't just put all your energy into your posts and think that's going to do it because it's not. You have to be doing both together. Then the next, it brings it right into the next T, which is tracking. If you are not tracking what you're doing, you're, you're like spinning on a hamster wheel and never, ever going to get anywhere. I'm not really sure. This is another thing. I don't really know why we don't think we should track. Like, think about a pharmaceutical sales rep. They have to track their follow-ups. They have to track who they're connecting with. They have to track their sales. And if their boss ask them for their tracking information and they don't have it, they're fired. So why do we think we can just kind of, you know, talk to people and forget about them and then hopefully some new people will come along and we can talk to them and, you know, we're not tracking consistently. Why do we think we can do that? We're not going to be fired. You're just not going to be successful, right? It's the same thing. It's the same as a brick and mortar business. If I didn't track my clientele at the hair salon and see, oh, they haven't been here for 18 weeks. That's weird. Maybe I should send them an email and see how they are. I should check in. We did that at my hair salon. We followed up with people. Where are you? you know, how are you? Is there, anything we, is there anything we did wrong? Why wouldn't we do that in this business as well? It's very similar we're all very confident, obviously, with the 21-day fix eating plan. What happens when you or your challengers don't track their food? They eat too much. I did it yesterday. I was out all day. I just didn't track my food. By the time I got home last night, I'd had like freaking 17 blue containers. And like it got out of hand because I didn't track it. I didn't pay attention. It's the exact same thing in your business. If you are not tracking every single day what you need to do, you're not going to do them. Last night, as I said, I was away all day. So last night I got home and my list was empty. I hadn't done anything. I did not go to bed until one o'clock until it was done. I didn't. I will not. I mean, there's trackers everywhere. The, the daily list of what you need to do. I meant to bring it here in my room, but we have tons of them in the file section. You know, it's your vital behaviors. 
connect and, and like connect with three new people, add two new people to your network. My goals might be different than yours, but you need to do, I think in our like new coach planner, is there not a tracker right in there? Yeah. Is that where it is? Pull that off, print it out and have it sitting beside you. Like I use Teamsy and that works, but it, it doesn't necessarily, Teamsy doesn't, I don't know. I like to have that piece of paper right beside me still. I still log everything in Teamsy, who I'm talking to and how my follow-ups and stuff, but I still have that sheet of paper beside me on my desk all the time. And last night at 12 o'clock, actually at about 1130, I went in to wash my face and Terry said, Oh, you're going to bed already. Cause it's usually midnight. It always ends up being midnight for me. And I said, yeah, I think I'm good. And as I was inside, I remembered I didn't add new friends. I never added any new friends. So I hightailed her back out to my laptop and I opened it up and I added new friends before I went to bed. So I could clean off that to-do list. You just have to do it. And if you focus and stop wasting time, you can do it in a very short amount of time. You know, as a new coach, this does not need to take all day. When you just get on Facebook or whatever you're using, email or whatever platform you're using, I think most of us are using Messenger and Facebook. Get on there and stop wasting the time. Just focus on the things you have to do. There's two ways you can spend two hours on Facebook. The first way is you can open up your laptop, you can click into Messenger, and you can focus completely on your messages and then go to the next step, focus on adding a couple new friends, go to your friends list, add them into your group, whatever way you're gonna do that, completely focus on the tasks. The other way is like this, go into Facebook, yeah, check out your challenge groups for a bit, and then get totally di diverted to something else, another page that looks fun, and then, oh, there's a video maybe you should watch. <gasps> right, I'm supposed to be messaging. You message one person. Okay, that's good, then you get, totally distracted again by a message that comes in and someone sent you a link to some other website. So you go check out that. Then you go to another page. Then you look at your clock and two hours have gone by and you feel like, you know, I did a lot of work today. I did that. I got lots done in that two hours, but you look at your tracker and you've done nothing. You haven't done the vital behaviors. You haven't done what you need to do. Watching that video is not going to move your business forward. Trust me. It, like it's not <laughs> it'll give you a few tips personal development right now take your half hour a day and do it and that's awesome you need it implement what you learned which I would say make a post out of it that's how I implement my personal development that's really why I do it every day it feeds me fuels me but it also creates a post <laughs> like I always have an ulterior motive I'm always multitasking something hey Michelle yeah can I just go back to the tracking thing? Because um, what I did when I, well, I really until I started Teamsy, but especially in the very beginning, and this might help some newer coaches, is I just had my notebook and every day I would write on my paper, um, invite and then leave space and follow up, leave space, connect, leave space and add, leave space. And then I would just make sure that by the end of the day, I had names in all four of those categories. Because really, if you're filling in those categories, like connect, invite, add, and follow up, as long as you've got names in all four of those, you've done what you need to do to move your business forward. So it really is just as simple as that, just having a piece of paper and filling it in and not, not going to bed until it's filled in. Yeah, that's what I did. This is an old book I just found. So I think this might be from last year, September 23rd. Anyways, I had, the, like I have probably a hundred of these from the dollar store. And I have connect, post, projects, follow up. Like I just have it all written down there and there's the people I wrote in every single day I can go back to these books like if I'm having a month that I'm feeling like oh boy I need to talk to some new people or to get reconnected I can go back in these books right here here's someone that still has not bought I can go talk to her today 
you know, maybe she, you know, like Teensy makes things very easy. And personally, I think everyone should be on Teensy. Heidi made a great post yesterday. It's a lesson that we all learn and it happens to all of us. It's happened to me. It's happened to all of us. It's nothing to be, you know, feeling embarrassed about, I guess is the word because it happens, but Teensy makes it a lot easier for that not to happen. When I first went on to Teensy and saw the, ugh, the conversations that I just left, like literally people were ready to buy and I just didn't connect. I didn't follow up with them because they were, everything was really scattered. I, I didn't have a good tracking system. Teensy is worth the investment. This is a business. Any business you're going to have to invest in. You got to take this seriously. If you want serious results, if you're just here to pay for your Shakeology, that's awesome. Nothing wrong with that. But you know, if, if you're not going to produce really grand results, if you don't treat it like a business success builds on itself. So as you continue to do all these activities over and over and over again and take it seriously, it's going to grow. There's no, there's absolutely no way it can't. The only reason it doesn't work is people don't put the time and the effort into it. We give you like, I don't know how many ways I can say it, that it's those simple things that you do every day that are going to grow you, that's going to grow your business. It's not the fluffy stuff that you don't really need to worry about right now. You don't need to worry about creating a, a, a team coaching thing. You don't need to worry about a blog. You, you really don't need to worry about anything but Facebook and messenger, you know, and, and making your night, your posts, making sure you're not being a salesperson. You're being just a real person. We're not here to sell the 21 day fix guys. Carl Deichler does one hell of a job selling the 21 day fix. We don't have to worry about it. We need to sell ourselves. You know, your customer's interested in the 21 day fix. What she's wondering about is what kind of support she's going to get from you. Why are you the person that's going to help her get to her goals? The 21 day fix doesn't change. It stays the same. It's the same program. You can buy it on Amazon. Sorry. You can buy it anywhere these days, I think. Sorry, guys. Nice to see the sun, but not in my eyes. Um, you know, you don't have to sell the 21 day fix. It sells itself. People know that it works, but what they need is the support. And that's what you need to show in your posts. How are you relatable to the person you're talking to, why would they want to talk to you and how are you going to help them? You know, what are, what are you going through that they're going through that you can go through together? It's not about, Hey, come and buy the 21 day fix for me because I've lost 10 pounds. That's not it. That's not what they're buying from you. That's not what a coach does. A coach doesn't do that anywhere. You know, we need to, to post about ourselves and our journey. That's getting off topic. What I need you to know is that you need to track your posts. Make sure you're doing your posts. Make sure you're following up with people. Just make sure you're doing those vital behaviors and writing them down. You just need a dollar store notebook if you're not ready to invest in anything else, but you need to be tracking that stuff. You can't just be leaving it to chance. If you're a procrastinator, just stop. Oh my God. I don't know how many times I hear shoulda, woulda, coulda. Like, I don't know guys, it, that doesn't get you anywhere. Waiting until you've got to your goal weight, waiting until you feel more comfortable with iMovie, waiting until you know how to use Canva. Just go. <laughs> if you, I, I, if you're one of those people that's waiting to be perfect, please scroll back. Take the time tomorrow when everybody's still sleeping, get up a little early, take the time to scroll back to my first post and see how perfect it was. It wasn't, it was terrible, horrible on every page, everywhere, awful. So go, if you need a confidence boost, go look at those and know that I was still able to be successful even though I sucked ass so bad at first. Nobody knows what they're doing. You guys are, have at least have a little bit of chance because you can see um, the, the, the leaders on our team. You can sort of go and look at their posts and say, that's cool. What's she doing with her pictures? Why do her selfies look so good? Maybe I should ask her. 
You know, why does her wording, how does she come up with these posts? Is she really that motivating? She just thinks like that every day? No, there's something that we do. Like I can tell you what I do. I go to Pinterest and I find a quote or I go to my book and I find a quote and I think, okay, I'm going to use that quote and I'm going to talk about it. I don't think of it like, I don't just think of all this stuff. Are you kidding? So if you're wondering, ask. Don't wait to be perfect. You have to do stuff. To be better and none of us are perfect none of us you know we're all getting better every single day um, and the the net the last thing I kind of wanted to touch on especially for well actually for all of us it's that analysis paralysis <laughs> you know you know what if they say no what if they think I'm calling them fat what if they think I'm trying to you know make them join a pyramid scheme what if what if what if if you're thinking about all that stuff all the time and letting it stop you, you're not going to get anywhere. You know, it, you are not going to get anywhere. It is going to take you down. You just have to, there's this, I talked about this on my leader call this week and um, I'm not going to get too close, too much into it, but there's this whole theory that if you just quickly do something before your head is able to really think about it, so if you have someone in your head that you think she would be awesome for your challenge group or you think she would be awesome on your team, go ask her. Just ask her. Don't worry about the outcome. Nothing bad is going to happen. If she comes back and says, oh, you're just trying to get me on your team, well then clarify it. Say, no, honestly, Shelby, I, I really did think you would be really great, but I can see it's not for you. Don't no worries. Like I thought you'd be good. Most of the time people are going to, I had a lady this week. I have been thinking about asking her to coaching forever. And I almost shit my pants when I did it this week. I even sent it to my diamonds and I never do that. Like I invite people every single day. I never talk to them about it, but I even sent them the message. I was so nervous about it. She got back to me and said, Yes, I am laughing my ass off. I can't believe you're asking me to do this. However, I don't really know much about it. And so I won't say no until I know more about it. That's what she said to me. So now I get the chance to tell her more about it. You know, who knows what will happen? But, I mean, I know that feeling of fear, but if I never, she did in fact say, I'm flattered that you thought of me. If anything, people are going to be flattered that you would want to work with them. And that's how I sent the message. I love hanging out with you. I'd love to hang out with you more. You know, I don't see her every six weeks cutting her hair anymore. So I'd love to hang out with her more. I was just honest. Sometimes get off the scripts and get off all that stuff and just be honest with people and ask them to join you. So that's really what I wanted to talk about was the time that it takes to build this business. If you're thinking it's going to be fast. I'm here to tell you it's not. Um, and tracking. Really super important to get tracking your daily activities, okay? You've got to do those activities every single day to make sure that you're progressing. Everything builds on itself. The more you do that every day, the quicker you're going to see success. I will find one of our trackers and post it in um, Team Fit Neat today so we can have it right there for your new coaches to print off. That's all I had at the beginning. I had a cute, I made a cute little tracker, pink and gold and all that shit. So you can have that sitting beside you, have a notebook. That's all you need. Eventually I want everyone to get onto Team Z. Um, it's important. The quicker you do it, the better it's going to be. Honestly, if I had started Team Z two years ago, whew, I can't even tell you where I'd be right now. I have no idea, but it would have helped me for sure. It would have caused, it would have caused me a lot less frustration. That's for sure. Okay. I'm going to, I have a teensy tip. Sorry. I have a teensy tip. Oh yes. Go ahead. Uh, well, maybe everyone else has figured this out, but I certainly hadn't. Um, so you put in your goals of how many people you want to connect with and it, it really formulates, you know, how many coaches, how many customers, how many prospects that you reach out to. And then it'll track your follow-ups. And what I was doing was I was going into my follow-ups first and banging those messages out. And then I would look at my team Z and it's like, oh, I've hit my, my prospect count for the day. And then I would stop 
And I'm wondering why I'm having the same conversations with people because I'm not actually adding anybody new in. So if you're using Teamsy, don't do that. Do follow-ups last. Do your prospect, like everyone's nodding because they already know this, but if you, <laughs> if you didn't know that, hopefully that's a tip. It's, I fall into that trap all the time because I think, oh my God, I got to get these follow-ups is my weakness. I have been lucky that I've, I seem to always have new people to talk to. So follow-ups end up being my weakness all the time. I, all the time. So I caught into that trap a lot. I would go to my follow-ups because it's really the thing I hate the most. And then I would see, oh, perfect. I've talked to like 25 people. Awesome. I'm done. And, and I hadn't talked to anyone new. If anyone comes to me and says, I'm not seeing success. This isn't working. My first question to them is, okay, how many new people did you talk today? Talk to today? Because if you're not talking to new people, if you're just continually going through the same wheel of people, first of all, you're pissing them off so much. Like if you're constantly messaging the same person over and over again, they are going to be out at some point. Like they're really going to get annoyed. So you need to be adding new people to your network all the time. There's lots of ways to figure out how to do that. I send the same video to every single coach that tells me the same story that they have no one to talk to. All you need to do is go to YouTube and plug in. How do I find new people? Beachbody. How do I find new? How do I connect? I don't know. There's tons of little searches you can do and tons of videos will come up. There's so many different ways to do that. You just have to be proactive and figure it out. I know that was a big question in our push to diamond group the other day. There's, you know, there's leaders from teams that are telling us they don't have anyone new to talk to. And uh, that's unacceptable. There's so many ways to have new people to talk to. There's gazillions of people on Facebook, just on Facebook to talk to. I could, I could literally talk to new people, send new, I find it addictive. I have to stop myself from adding new friends because I think Facebook's going to shut me down. I, I find it very addictive, like sending that, hi, how are you? I'd love to connect with you message and just seeing how many people will message me back. It, it, there's no shortage of people. And if you're new, there's definitely, you know, you're still in your warm market, ask for referrals, get anyone that comments or likes on your posts, make sure you're friends with them. Like when you first start, it's an endless supply of people. Okay. Anybody have any questions about what I talked about or about anything else this week? I have a question that has nothing to do with the call today. <laughs> That's okay. So I thought that I was going to get the boyfriend signed up as a coach like two days ago, but now we have to talk about it tonight. <laughs> so I like, I've, I've sent him videos from like what Amy had done on that push to Emerald and he obviously hasn't watched it because he's whatever. Um, I don't just like, I know he's skeptical about it because he's done his own research and he's like, Oh, it's all a scheme and whatever. So I just like, I, and he's very black and white. So if he finds something and he looks at it, he's going to believe it. So I just don't know like how to really explain what the benefit of him doing it. Like, I know that he doesn't have to do anything. It's all on me. I just, I don't really know how to explain it. Like I understand it, but then to get him to understand it is kind of like, I'm kind of like stuck as to how to explain that it's going to move me forward and then move him forward kind of thing. Has anyone had success with that? Talking to their husband? I just signed mine up. He didn't even know. I, I can't. It's honestly hard for me because I didn't even tell Terry. <laughs> I just did it. <laughs> Shelby, I think I would, I would just ask him if he, like, does he support you in this business? Like you've. Yeah. Like, and he's always said like, go for it and, you know, do whatever it is you got to do to make it work and whatever. So I don't know if I have to like pull out the guilt card or, well, you told me that you support me. This is supporting me. Does he think he's like, 
are you wanting him to invest his money or is no? It- and that's the thing. Like he's not like I'm not using his cards or whatever. Mm-hmm. Like I'm gonna have it on me, so it's not like he has to pay for any of it and whatever. So, so you're just using his sin number. Yeah, <laughs> like that's it. Like have so, you? Oh, yeah, go ahead, Megan. I I would just honestly like say to him that you know, it's not necessarily that he needs to understand this yeah. because at this point, I don't think he can understand. And maybe you can't even fully understand what it will do. Cause I didn't, and I still am learning about it, but just maybe say to him, like, what do you have to lose? Like, what are you, what are you afraid of? Can you just let me do this? Yeah. And see what happens in six months or 12 months? And can you just trust me to, to let me do this? Like, yeah. Don't worry about sending videos to him and making him understand because I think that's probably going to make him more confused and yeah. that's him to look at other things and seek other opinions. Just say to him, I want to do this. This is important to me. Are you willing to help me? Yes or no. Yeah. And if he says no, then you know what? Don't let it ruin your relationship. And yeah. just, that's fine. And eventually when he sees you still doing this in three months, in six months, in 12 months, then it's on him. Right. And yeah. I think it might be a little bit easier because I think when I say, well, your dad did it for your mom, <laughs> then he'll be like, oh, well, maybe. So, yeah. I, I think mean, I for that. him, there's nothing to lose. Like, he's no. nothing. So, I, I would do that. Was, even if I was using his money, he wouldn't care because I would just pay him for it. So, I think he's just like, oh, well, is my name going to be anywhere? Like, is any, Like, I just don't think he really trusts the business yet but he supports me doing it kind of thing so then I would just bring it all back to that like Megan said I mean I mean that's what I said to Terry I really don't know what Terry thought at first he probably thought oh god here she goes there's no like for my personality it wouldn't have mattered what he said I would I would have done it anyways and that's kind of how I am too yeah there was I was doing it anyways so I mean I said to Terry just give me six months with this who knows who knows what'll happen you know, let's, let's try this. I've, I've also had to say that, you know, last year was a really big building year for me to get to five star and to get to my goal. So I did miss time. I missed family time and it would drive Terry crazy every once in a while. And then we would sit down and we'd have to say, okay, well, I either do this or I do that. And the outcome is going to be different. What, how can we make this? And we made it work together and he, we both said, okay, yeah, this is a really big building year. And then next year, the goal was I wouldn't have to work anymore. So then I, I do have more time with Delaney now because I have more time, but last year was the building year. So we had to communicate. I mean, we did a whole call about this. Darlene and Rob actually did. And Rob made some great points. Like sometimes you just have to tell them, you just have to say, can you trust me, please? I really want to do this. I really want to try it. Let's give me six months and I'll really work hard and we'll see what we can do. You don't have, they don't need to understand the ins and outs, especially if it's not, it's not like you're taking money from your mortgage payment. You know, it's not like you're taking away, you know, there might be time taken away at the beginning, but I I think a lot has to do with just asking them and communicating, not communicating the ins and outs communicating your wants and your like this is like this is really fueling you Shelby like even though you might not be seeing like insane success at this point you know you're still really building you have in the how many months have you been doing this since November the 9th yeah like the change in you in that short period of time has been incredible like once you get leading a team. I can't even imagine like the growth that you've had, your confidence, just everything. And I'm sure he's got to see that a little bit. Oh, he tells me all the time. He's like, your skin is tighter. And you know, you, when I give you massages, nothing really jiggles anymore. And I'm like, but does he see the inside? Is yeah, he, he sees that I'm a lot happier and I'm not miserable. And yeah, so I think that's where you need to focus, Shelby, when you're talking to him. It, it's not the abs. It's, none of this is about that. There's nothing there yet. <laughs> but none of this is about the outside. Yeah. Once you get into coaching, it's all about the inside. It's all about what's happening to you in your mind, 
how your confidence has changed. You know, it's your passion for something different. And why I think it's so important to communicate with our spouse or our partner or whatever is as you, and this is coming from a multi-married person. <laughs> I've been down a couple of married roads. If you don't communicate as you're growing, you're going to grow apart. Because we all grow at very different, how did this become a marriage counseling session? <laughs> but it's so true because it happened in my first marriage. This is what happened. I grew, my partner didn't, we grew apart. We, ne we grew yeah. apart because we didn't talk. I didn't talk about how I was growing and changing and my feelings were changing and my desires, my goals, everything was changing. So he didn't know it was happening. And then one day I woke up totally pissed off at him because he was still doing things that just drove me freaking crazy. Like I had got past going to the bar on the weekends and doing those silly 20 something things. I, I had got past it. So we grew totally apart. I could see if I didn't communicate with Terry now, the same thing would happen very easily. We would grow apart. We're, we would, it would happen quickly. So I, you, you have to be communicating with each other. And some of that is just saying, listen, I know you don't get this. I know you don't. And I'm not expecting you to take the time to understand it because you're doing your thing. But can you support me? And, you know, maybe when I do want to talk about it every once in a while, will you sit with an open mind and, and just and only because I want to do it. Like that should be, even if that's the only reason that you still think it's a total pyramid scheme, but because it's important to me, will you please just sit and listen and hear about it or whatever? And a big thing for me, sorry to jump in. No, go ahead. Was bringing him to an event. That was like a game changer for him. I did, I, I'm, be honest I didn't tell Rob what I was doing for a long long time and he I don't know if he thought I was fooling around or something on my phone because I was always on my phone and he's like what are you doing on your phone you know but I don't know what if I was embarrassed about what I was doing or just wasn't sure or just wanted it to be it's working so look at it, it's working kind of thing I don't know but then when I brought him he did a program in the Jan in January of last year and then he was he went in the cruise, which that's a big event to bring to, but I mean, super Saturday, start with that. And then he can see what the bigger picture is. I mean, it, we can tell them till the cows come home of what we're doing. And then, but until they see it themselves, you can explain it and say what you're doing and how it's helping you helping other people, et cetera, et cetera. But I would suggest bringing him to some type of an event if you can just so he gets to see and you know maybe he won't like it maybe he will <laughs> but uh that's just a suggestion for me make sure you just tell him about it and just say hey i want to talk to you okay yeah I'll I'll jump, I, I, I can jump in for a second too and hopefully it's not too loud because i'm in a box but i think another thing with um some men as well is they um subconsciously think as we grow it's going to be less and less time for them like my husband I know that was big for him he thought the busier I got with it then the less time I was and it was it was happening that I was the busier I got the more I was on my computer or on my phone so I think too is just reassuring reassuring I thought I was on mute for a second it's just reassuring them too that I'm going to grow and I'm going to be busier but like don't be afraid that that's going to take away from our relationship and just giving them that reassurance because I think part of them wants to hold you back because they're afraid it's gonna they're gonna lose you in it. So that's my two cents too. Just to... totally agree, Carla. That's a good point. Like you, I think sometimes we don't remember that they are having some of the similar feelings that we're always having, right? Like they're feeling insecure and all of that same stuff men feel too. And if you're sort of all of a sudden like growing, your confidence is growing, you're changing a little bit, like just your, your day to day stuff is changing. And they kind of look at you beyond your body, the way you look, because that's, that's a confident, that's the first thing that happens, right? You look better you feel better, it all sort of starts happening. And if they're not kind of on the same path, they can feel really threatened by that. 
that you know you're gonna whatever so it's all about like it all boils down to communication that's always the thing that it's super important even though this is your thing and that's really empowering for a woman right to have their own thing it is awesome I mean I've always wanted to have my own thing just mine but at the same time we have to remember that our partners have to be at least communicated with and and feel comfortable with it and know that you know we're not not involving them and we need their support them feeling wanted that you just are asking for them their support I don't think feeding him with information is going to help anything if anything like Megan said it's going to make it worse because it's it is a confusing it, it's one emerald signing your spouse up to for the emerald thing is all about trusting your upline <laughs> I had to trust my upline that it was the right thing to do. And now we're, we ask you to trust us. We know it's the right thing to do. I can tell you by my bank account it is the right thing to do, but you have, it's a trust thing and you have to work for it. It doesn't like, if you're going to sign them up and not do anything, that's probably dumb. <laughs> but if your goal is to build a business, it's a very smart decision. You can't do anything smarter. So but that kind of stuff, explaining that to him, it's just going to get lost. There's not enough like factual information besides me getting your husband to come over here and like shoving him in my husband's bank account. Like that would be probably the only thing. And I'm not going to do that. So it's more about you just telling him and, or, or asking him to, to support you. Does that help? Yeah. Okay. Good. Anybody else have anything they wanted to talk about this week? No challenges. Any who's had something really awesome happen this week? Unmute yourself and tell us. I offered a girl I had talked to like two or three months ago who had tried Shakeology and didn't like it because she wasn't mixing it right. And then we talked about the programs and Shakeology and she kind of just ignored me. And then I offered her the um, Shake Off and she was like, well, if I'm going to put money to six days, I might as well just buy a bag. And then she guess I guess there's like jobs that give you credits towards healthy stuff. So her work is going to like pay her some of that back, but she had an issue with it yesterday and it didn't go through. So I told her to redo it and she hasn't done it yet. So I think I'm just going to follow up with her either today or tomorrow and find out if she's had or issues. I just don't want to be overly been like, Hey, have you put your order in yet? Like, have you done it? So, <clears throat> so that's good. That's awesome. Yeah, I find that a lot actually when I invite people. I find the Shakeology Shake Off really an easy to invite to. Like I just go back to anybody. And I find that happens a lot. Like people will say, well, how much is it for the six days? How much is it for 30 days? And I always say, you know, the six days is, you know, pretty small investment, but the 30 days sure the investment's bigger but you do have the 30 day money back guarantee with that so um yeah it often happens you'll have a couple people just say oh you know what maybe i'll just get a full bag and then if you explain to them the benefits of having it for 30 days like that's when they're going to see some changes like six days is really going to tell them if they like the taste of it that's about all that's going to happen they're probably going to lose some weight if they follow the clean eating plan but like water weight they're not really losing any weight but everyone loves what the scale says so it's 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 good that's awesome anybody else um i uh i this is probably my first week ever in two and a half years that i've actually sent out a coach invite every day so that huge for me and i think because heidi and i have like we're preparing our first coach sneak peek for next week it's giving me kind of my own Thing that I'm like I, I feel like I have something to invite people to and one of them I actually put her I met her last summer in that oxygen challenge that I did she's like a personal trainer and she's a nutritionist and I'm, I put her as a two on Teensy because I'm like oh I could never even ask her I could never talk about this with her and a couple weeks ago she actually actually the beginning of February she messaged uh, me saying you know I've gained 20 pounds and I, I'm a personal trainer and like she actually said, is there any way I could lose 10 pounds in a week or something like that? And I'm like thinking this makes no sense. And so I've just been chatting with her all February about like where she is and what she's been struggling with. And then I just kind of threw it out there. Like is, you know, you should be coaching. Like you're always posting motivational things and you already have the experience and she's going to join the coach sneak peek. So it's just, 
been really encouraging to like actually not have that um, fear of the out, like the outcome. I have no attachment to the outcome. Like that has been huge for me ever since I had that um, read the book, and that was one thing that really stuck out for me. And um, so yeah, and it's just encouraging to actually have people responding not like it's not as scary as I was making it out to be so that's pretty huge for me so it it really is when you take your take the fear out of it like don't worry about it it's you know that feeling of fear the feeling of someone responding back to you and just saying thank you is way better <laughs> like it's way bigger you know that big huge feeling you feel of fear when they actually get back to you and even just say thanks for thinking of me even if they say they're not interested but if you get that message back and they're just so encouraged and positive by the fact that you invited them and thought of them that's way bigger way more impactful on your whole psyche than the fear of doing it so just do it don't worry about what they're going to say because you can't you can't be in anyone's head you have no clue what's going on with people i have a short story that i'm going to end up with, end with i have a girl in my challenge group who is literally a coach like she is the most inspiring empowering woman i've ever met i want her on my team like oh my god i can i just can't even stand it i have sent her i'm actually annoying myself how many messages i've sent her like oh my god thank you so much for inspiring everyone and like little tidbits all the time and i've literally sent her a couple like real invites to coaching she only responds to my messages about like, how was your week? How are you doing? If I say anything about coaching, she never responds. Finally, yesterday I was like, so Michelle, you can't say anything more. Like clearly she's a no, she just doesn't know how to tell you. Then I posted that what, what are, what's happening next post in our challenge group. And she actually posted, I'm going to go it on my own. This has been great. Thanks for everything, Michelle. Good luck. And I thought, oh my God, like I have totally, totally pissed her off. Like I've now just asked her too many times. Now I've lost her as even a challenger. I was so, I felt sick and I thought I have to message her, but I don't want to bug her again. Like I went inside my head so much. Yesterday she messaged me and asked me if she could call me. I thought, oh my God, she is going to tell me that I'm a terrible coach and I should not be asking people so many times to be a coach. Like I had myself totally messed up. Turns out this poor woman. So, and it's big for me to say, sure, call me. Cause I hate talking on the phone, but I, I had her call me or I called her and, uh, she has been in a car. She was in a car accident four years ago. She was hit from behind. The man got so angry. She's way out West in Edmonton. He fought, found where she lived and hit like broke into her house and hit her with a crowbar. So she has been in this huge legal lawsuit for four years and they can literally tap into, she, or she doesn't know if they can, but she's afraid that anything she says on Facebook can be found because she's in this huge legal lawsuit. So she said, I can't respond to you. Like I can't let, and we're on the challenge tracker app, right? So she, we don't really communicate unless I message her. And now when I think back, when she responds to me ever, she does it through the challenge, like through my email. She's never responded to me on Facebook. And it's because she can't let anyone know that she's even attempting exercise because she's in this whole money, financial, legal lawsuit. And she wants to be a coach. So here I had this whole thing conjured up my head, lost sleep over it, felt like shit, like just was losing my mind over it, really. I felt terrible. And it was nothing. Like, it was totally nothing. So you can't, <laughs> you can't try and predict what people are thinking because clearly that, you know, I lost a couple of years off my life over that one. It was ridiculous. So don't try and predict. Don't try and think someone's going to say yes or no because you just never know. You just got to go for it. And that is how we will end. Okay. Have a good week, guys. Weekend, I guess. Bye.